The transitions in a triathlon are sort of like the fourth discipline, which is funny because we spend a lot of time swimming, cycling, and running, but not so much on that bit that connects them all together. Now, if you speak to anyone that's actually done a triathlon or duathlon before, they'll probably tell you just how unusual and perhaps how uncomfortable it feels going from one discipline to the next. So it's really important that you know exactly what you're doing. So today, I'm gonna to be running through how to do a T2 for beginners going from the bike to the run. Well today I'm going to strip things right back to basics with T2. So I'm going to run through some of the rules, the equipment we need, how the transition area actually works and also how we actually do a T2. But first of all, let's run through a few of the rules. Right, so the first rule and the first step to T2 is the dismount line. Now we have to dismount our bike before the dismount line, not on it, not after it, we have to dismount before it. Now we continue beyond that and we make our way to the transition area. But whilst we do this, try to refrain from taking your helmet off or even just unfastening it to try and save yourself some time. If you do do that and someone spots you, you are at risk of getting a penalty or worse, getting disqualified. But now talking about our transition area, every event will have a designated transition area. Now that does vary between events and how that tr transition area actually works in terms of its racking also can vary. But one rule that does remain for all events is that you have an area and you are respectful of other athletes in terms of where you put your bike and all your kit. Now the bike's racked, now is the point that we can remove our helmet. And again, you can place that on your bike or on the floor with your bike nice and closely. Whilst we're talking about equipment, now this also does vary from events as to how much you can put in your area. But as a general rule of thumb, I just say, try not to bring your kitchen sink. Some events do allow you to bring a small bag and place that up beside your bike for your pre and post race equipment. Another and final rule is no nudity. Right, well let's actually take a closer look at the equipment and it's worth mentioning at this point that for some of those larger events like Ironman and Challenge, they'll actually require you to put your equipment into bags that you collect as you come through both T1 and T2. But for your smaller and local events, it's quite standard to just leave your equipment by your bike, as I have right here. So let's take a closer look at those equipment choices. And coming into T2, you're actually wearing a lot of your most complicated kit choices. So it's actually a case of just depositing that and then grabbing your running shoes and tearing it away. So all I have here in T2 is my running shoes. You can of course leave some socks, that's optional. You can have some change of kit there. You can also have some food, some nutrition, just to top up those energy levels. You will also notice I've got a towel here, which can be quite a nice touch just to wipe your feet off through T2. It's also quite a nice way of identifying your transition area when you come into T2. Right, well let's quickly run through some of the setup before we get on to showing you how to do it. So as I've explained already, I've got my running shoes out beside my bike, but I'm making sure they're not stuck out into the path of other races, other competitors, or in the way of my bike when I'm needing to rack it. As we're setting up pre-race, this is an ideal opportunity to scout out the transition area. Check out where you're gonna be biking in, where you're gonna be needing to run out, and so on. It's also a really good opportunity to make a mental note of which rack your bike is in. Then when you're running through with your bike or even coming out of the swim, you can quickly and easily count the racks and find your bike. You can also use landmarks if there are any or perhaps even an event banner that's in line with your bike. Well now that's all the admin done, let's move on to the fun bit and show you how to do it. Well, as mentioned already, today I'm focusing this towards beginners. So I'm gonna run through a T2 step by step. Now, with this being a relatively new sport to you or even perhaps brand new, the most important factor is that we make it around safely. That doesn't necessarily mean slowly because if we do this transition well, it can still be quite swift. So we're gonna approach the line as you would for a stop junction or a set of traffic lights, robots or stop lights, whatever you like to call them. So we're gonna start slowing down in advance of the line. It's often worth checking this approach out prior to the race so that it doesn't take you by surprise. If you are using clipless pedals, then you may want to start unclipping from one side in advance. Then come to a stop 
just before the line. And I would recommend doing this a meter or two just to be on the safe side and place one foot down on the floor to balance yourself. Then simply take your other leg off and over the saddle so that you can walk or even run away with your bike. Okay, this may all sound quite basic and it is, but it works well and it's safe. It's better to nail each step well rather than being totally out of control from the start. But right now we're off the bike and it's a case of making our way to the transition area and how we do that is entirely up to you. So we can hold the bike by the handlebars here, that works perfectly fine. Another option is to hold the bike by the saddle here and in this position you have just a little bit more control of the bike also eliminates the risk of maybe hitting your ankles or feet on the pedals but it is another skill and maybe you just need to build up to that time as you become a little bit more confident now is a case of making our way to the transition area and trying to get there as quickly as possible so hopefully when we were setting up our bike before the race you took a mental note of how to get there so it's a case of figuring that out working out which rack your bike needs to be put in and getting over there but do remember not to touch or unclip your helmet as you do so now how we actually rack our bike does vary between events a lot of events we use a rail system which will hang our bike from the saddle or even the handlebars some other events we use a system where we put our front or rear wheel into and kind of wedge it in a little like i have today now hopefully you've actually found the right transition area and don't worry if you haven't because you're not the first and you certainly won't be the last next check is to make sure that your bike is secure and safe it's not about to topple over and now we can move on to taking some of our bike kit off so i'm going to take my helmet off and then my bike shoes i'm going to leave them beside my bike out of the way of other competitors and now put my running shoes on now you may have noticed that I have elastic laces on my running shoes, so I got my running shoes on nice and quickly there. But this is entirely optional, you can of course just use standard laces and tie them up through transition. But elastic laces are nice and quick and perhaps you might want to build up to using these with time. You can of course put socks on in transition, I already had mine on on the bike and just kept them on for the run. You can put other kit on, get your nutrition as you go out. Another thing to talk about is numbers or number belts so some races do require that you wear a number on the back for the bike and then on the front for the run so if you're using a number belt now's the time to spin it around to the front as you run out but don't worry if you do forget because people will often give you a little nudge and reminder as you're running out of transition well then if you're a beginner to triathlon then that is everything that you need to know about t2 and to make it through it safely and easily if you like this video then click that thumbs up button if you'd like to see more videos from gtn just click on the globe and subscribe now as i mentioned already that feeling of going from one discipline to the next can feel a little bit unusual and uncomfortable so why not go and watch our brick workout 101 video by clicking just down here if you'd like to see our top five tips for t1 and how to go from the swim to bike faster just click here